Abraham Lincoln, 16th President of the United States, responsible for freedom of the slaves, to keep the integrity of the Union. Overall, a pretty swell guy. All of this is pretty well known about Abraham Lincoln. However, something that many people may not know is that Abraham Lincoln, not only being the President of the United States, was also an incredibly feared wrestler and was very good at it. Let's talk about it today. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and it's always interesting to find out about the hobbies of famous people and what they like to do during their spare time. Yes, some people might like to go fishing, or maybe like to do knitting. But Abe Lincoln, on the other hand, he likes to get aggressive in the world of wrestling. This certainly gives us a little bit more insight into their personality, what they like to do in their spare time, but also provides an insight into their character. A good example of what comes out of a person when you know that they are a nationally recognised wrestler. As a young man, there is no denying that he was an athletic person, with a keen interest in the sport of wrestling. Abe competed in wrestling matches for more than a decade in his youth, and rarely lost. This was because of his tall and strong physique, perfect for a sport where you need to be able to overpower other strong tall men. Yes, he was an active wrestler during his youth, and particularly went down the route of catch wrestling, which was basically a whole bunch of grappling things such as hooks and submissions, all that sort of style of cool stuff, which pretty much led into where we're going to today. Wrestling in the United States of America actually goes back quite a long way, with natives having established their own version of wrestling in the 15th and 16th centuries. Europeans would then begin arriving on the North American continent with their own variations on the wrestling sport, which became quite different from that of the natives. This came heavily from both the French and British settlers. This would surprisingly become quite a big thing, with many people proving who the greatest challenger is in the local area, and turning into somewhat of a social occasion. However, it's not quite the same as wrestling you know today. This was a more savage version. Something which had little rules and people could get quite seriously injured. Because hey, that's what it was like back in the day. The sport would evolve around the 18th century where things became a little bit more tame. Still a spectator sport, but this was refined over time. Many academies and schools would look to teach young boys to be proficient wrestlers using these techniques, such as George Washington, who at 18 held a collar and elbow wrestling championship, which was at least county-wide and possibly colony-wide. He kept on with wrestling by defeating seven consecutive challenges for Massachusetts volunteers at the ripe age of 47, still in top fighting form almost 30 years on from that initial competition. Whilst Washington was of course a well-known and respected politician, much like Abe Lincoln, he had absolutely nothing on this absolute giga-chad of a human. Abe Lincoln and his wrestling ability was levels above. I mean, no wonder. He stood at 6 feet and 4 inches in height. It also helped that he worked as a rail splitter on the frontier, a person who splits logs and railroad ties for fences using a big old axe. And this may have helped him achieve the physique that he needed to be a good wrestler, particularly when he was younger. And this was the reason that he was called the Rail Splitter in his presidential bid. And as far as presidential bid names go, Rail Splitter is a pretty sweet name to get. When Abe was just 18, he worked at a store when his boss learnt about his wrestling prowess. So they decided to formulate a bit of a business strategy. He began promoting Abe as a business venture, with many people coming around to see if they could take on Abe in the sport of wrestling. One particular bout that Abe was involved with was with a local hard man called Jack Armstrong, a local gang leader and brutish guy who wanted a piece of the action. This all sounds pretty nasty, but uh, just to tell you how good Abe Lincoln was at wrestling, he beat him no problem. So much so that he absolutely thrashed him. Frustrated by Lincoln's enormous reach, Armstrong started fouling Lincoln, and whilst he stood up, he eventually got pretty pissed off from this behaviour. Picking up his opponent, Lincoln smashed him to the ground and knocked him out. Not only had he proven that he was a great wrestler, and was known for it, but actually gained a lot of respect from the gang, who would soon become his first political followers later in his life. It's not what you know, it's who you know people. Look. If you're going to run as a presidential candidate from Illinois, you aren't going to get anywhere by using your fancy words and your book smarts. 
Well, the only way you're going to do it is to show that you're a big, strong guy. And what better way to do that than show that you're an absolute wrestling god? Lincoln, to even get to this point, pretty much grew and grew and grew in his ability of wrestling. Apparently, at the age of 19, he fought off a bunch of would-be hijackers from his stepmother's river barge. This stuff all seems made up, but apparently it's true. He would become a wrestling champion of his county in 1830 at the age of 21. During his political campaign, there was even a story of him tossing a man 12 feet in the air after he tried to find one of his friends. As to how real this is, I don't know, or maybe it's an over-exaggeration, but the sheer fact that he is recognised for this shows that he must have been a pretty strong guy nonetheless. Whilst 12 feet might be a little bit of an exaggeration, based on everything else I've heard today, I actually kinda believe it in some strange way. Almost like I want it to be true. This guy must be built like an absolute brick shit house. And yes, of course, he would eventually become the US president and go on to achieve much bigger things in his life, which I think everybody knows him for today. However, it's easy to overlook the other things in his life, which makes him such an interesting character to look into and to show that he is truly a complete badass. So much so that he was inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Like I said, complete badass. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, well, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. Look, for the next presidential election, I've had enough of big long campaigns and debates and all this boring stuff. I think that we should just get the two front runners, stick them in a wrestling ring and see who wins. And that is going to truly prove who should be the next president. Who is going to be the man who can out wrestle the other man? Or woman. I mean, Hillary Clinton might have a chance. Maybe she's a fantastic wrestler and we all just don't know it. Because if this happens, she might actually have a chance of winning. Who knows? I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.